Hey everybody, welcome back to Matthew Kelly Pottery. I hope you are doing well. Today is part two of Twisted Mugs. I'm going to show you uh, how I trim the foot on these, how I put a handle on them, show you some of the tools I'm using for trimming, and those sorts of things. So, let's go. Okay, about two days ago, I uh, cut this free from the bat. I flipped it over, uh, this and the other. I've got two more over here under plastic still. I probably would have trimmed the foot on these yesterday, but I uh, just had an interruption in my schedule. Didn't get that done. So I also knew that I needed to record this, which also made it like, all right, I got to make sure I have time to record the video while I'm trimming them. Uh, so, And this is a chuck that I threw probably a week ago. I've had it covered up with plastic. Uh, I threw it to trim some other cups similar to these on. Uh, anytime I'm doing these that might have an uneven rim, uh, I like to throw a chuck. It just helps uh, hold the piece on there a whole lot better while trimming. Uh, this uh, You can throw this and then torch it right away and then use it. Uh, but if you can do it like this where I've had it thrown just covered up for like several days, it's stiff enough but it's still so, uh, still soft enough that I could indent it but and, and that's going to help hold on to that cup while I'm trimming. In the trimming process, I use uh, various sizes of trimming spinners from Diamond Core Tools. I use their uh, Half Moon uh, trimming tool, uh, the one that has the, the 90 degree angle and then curved on the other side. Like I said, I can't remember the name of it. And then I have my uh, stamp tool here because instead of signing the bottom of these, I like to um, uh, I like to use my stamp and make my little button on the inside, kind of like I do at the base of the handle. So these twisted mugs end up having two buttons on them, um, not that that really matters. So the main thing with this is to uh, get this uh, kind of centered, recentered on the chuck. Uh, there's I just there's no way to really do this easily as far as like tap centering that kind of thing. So I just kind of do it by look and feel, and then adjust it. There we go. That's not perfect, but it's close enough. Uh, next thing I like to do is uh, still uh, you like to use the trimming spinner so that I can apply some down pressure as I'm starting to trim this. And so basically what I want to do, I don't want to mess too much with the, the, the place where I have facets carved, but I want to trim all of this kind of like this half inch here of clay. I want to trim that back. I also like to have this uh, uh, the extra clay here so that as it comes down to this point then the foot can kind of flare a little bit back out this way so it kind of adds to the lifted look of the mug and so and then I want to carve uh, some out from the inside as well to make an uh, inset uh, uh, on the foot there so uh, I'm just going to use and I'll, I'll do different angles uh, when I trim the second one I'll do it from the other angle so you can see different angles and how I'm doing this but uh, you definitely uh, I do come into contact with a little bit of the uh, facets, um, but I don't worry about that too much. I come back and smooth that up later. Um, there was a little uneven spot there on the bottom of this where I had cut it free from the bat, so I wanted to go ahead and even that up first. One of the reasons I like this trimming tool, the one with diamond core tools, they're very sharp, which is good because this is considerably drier than it needs to be for trimming. It's not too dry, but it's definitely a lot easier if you have a little bit softer clay. You just have to be a whole lot more steady with this. I love this trimming tool because it has that 90 degree angle and the curved side so that I can use both of those depending on if I want that sharp edge or not, and it's all in one tool. So there we go. What I like to do for the uh, the button on the bottom, 
I got a little scrap clay over here. Uh, it's a little, a little wet, but it'll work. Just like I do on the bottom of my handle. Just take a little ball of clay. And then stick that right there in the center. And then use my stamp to mark that. And for the little bits of where I had to trim into the uh, facets there, I like to come back with one of these uh, other diamond core tools with the loop and just kind of even that up so in case I've pushed any clay down into there, uh, I don't want any... Uh, I'd like to have the beginning of those facets or swirls look pretty clean as well. So I just come back and trim a little bit in those just to make sure that it's not gummed up with clay from the from making the foot and there we go trimmed foot cleaned up around those uh, facets at the base and then we have that and because of how stiff it is, we'll be ready to put a handle on after I trim the other one. But we'll move the camera to the other side, trim the other one, and then go do some handles. Alright, so this was the one that I did the wide facets, uh, and then twisted it. It started to get a bit uneven here at the base. Uh, you probably, if you saw the last video, uh, if you didn't see the last video, I'll put a link in the description, or at least at the end of the video where you can check that out. But if you did see it, you could probably see where this one started to wobble a bit because probably I stretched it a bit too much at that base and it's starting to get kind of wonky. But uh, it's okay. These these pots are not meant to be your everyday kind of like... No, no pot's perfect, but they're not meant to be your perfectly thrown pots as is. So we're, uh, we're just taking some liberties to, to throw a little bit loose with these. But I do want to get this base... Uh, like I said, running kind of evenly around, so as I trim it, I don't have a big challenge of trying to trim something that's wobbling. So. All right, when it comes to the handles on these mugs, I have not been doing any certain length for each. Uh, I've just been doing a random length of handle for each mug. Uh, that's because they're a bit different than my normal handles, which uh, I normally attach the top of my handles, just like this one is here. But the bottom I usually stretch down and have like it come to an end, and I just I don't do the same kind of attachment on the top and the bottom. And with these, I'm doing that same kind of attachment on top and bottom. And so, and also still trying to put a groove or slightly pull these uh, on the mug. So these are challenging, uh, but I think the style of handle fits the, uh, the, the style of the mug really well. So uh, for like one that's going to fit one or two fingers, um, there's, um, this will probably fit two fingers by the time it's done. Maybe not. This is four and a half inches. The die that I use to make these is a custom die I had made for me. I like to have a handle that's a little bit bigger than I want in the finish. As far as the overall handle, I wouldn't want to hold on to a handle that big myself. But what that does is I can 
I can kind of blunt one end and make it fatter where it attaches and then I can pull it and make it skinnier in the middle and maybe even all the way down if it's my one style of handle whereas this one I'm going to kind of make it fat on both ends and then attach it from there so I use a paddle which I did not grab all right got my paddle I use that on both ends so I use it to kind of to flatten out and I like to flip it over I don't like to do all the paddling from one side of the handle because it seems to like even out the uh, the flattening of it a bit more by paddling on different sides or holding the handle in different ways when I do that and you can already see just from uh, doing that I started out with four and a half inches on this handle and now I'm, I'm all the way down to three and a half just from doing that so you can see if I just bent that and just made a loop out of that it would be a pretty small handle but I am going to pull and kind of stretch this in the middle but first I'm going to attach the top part of the handle so I am going to use a little bit of slip I can't really score the mug because of it being a twisted mug like that but I'm going to put a a, a decent amount of slip in here because I also want that slip to kind of fill in all those crevices where the uh, twisted facets are and I also need to grab a sponge that I, I, th I thought I had all my tools over here that I needed but I did not so what I've been doing is just taking that uh, top part of the handle attaching it wherever I want on the side just getting all of that slip pushed in and into all those grooves so that I don't trap any air I'm trying to get a good attachment all the way around you know I can't smooth this in like I would for any other style of mug either so I just have to kind of push it and then what I like to do to clean up any excess slip is use a paintbrush with a little bit of water and then I can brush that extra slip also helps add moisture right around where you're attaching the handle so there's good multiple good reasons to use a little bit of water with a paintbrush like this all right now that I got the top attached I'm gonna go ahead and pull this a little bit so I'm gonna hold it in my hand this being uh, stiffened up pretty well I can do that and I want to go ahead and pull this a little bit just to get some of my get that nice finger groove down the middle kind of get me a nice spot where it attaches where that thumb groove starts and pull that down like that and then last time I put these on I was sitting down it was actually pretty helpful because I flipped the mug like this and I set it down right in between my legs and I was able to hold it and then do the slip I can do it in my hands as well but it was actually really helpful to be sitting down doing this because then I could sit this in in my lap and do this but uh, I'll just do it standing up seeing we're already here now I'm gonna take the bottom in I'm gonna add the slip to this one and this gets tricky because you're holding the mug holding the handle all with one hand and then having to add the slip and then I need to bend this one in try to keep it somewhat straight up and down and then attach that one and you gotta if you get this too wet while, you, while I was doing that pulling it it's really hard to push this into place if it's too wet so that's one thing you got to kind of watch out about and just trying to get a good attachment first and then I'll go back with the with the shaping I right, got that now I'm gonna do the same thing with my paintbrush and my water and I like to also use the sponge to clean off the the paintbrush so if I excess slip that gets on the paintbrush I don't want to just like brush that on to another spot I use the sponge that I have here to, to clean the paintbrush off as well. Now you can definitely see it's it's a little out of shape and it's uh, a little thicker at the bottom. It's probably a little bit bigger handle than I need for this size mug. Um, but then again too, somebody, some people like a really hefty handle. So I like to kind of continue that thumb groove on down around like this.
and then of course want to look at it from the side and get a get a good shape there and uh, I won't be able to show here how I do the thumb grips because these will have to sit for a while before I do the thumb grips but uh, I can show you how I do that I, I just won't do it on this video I have done, shown my thumb grips and it's the same style of thumb grip I do in my regular handles so if you're interested in that there is a video where I show how I do my regular handles and I can do and I'll show you how to do a thumb grip on that video but on my all my handles I always put that little button at the bottom as well so I figured while I'm doing it I might as well add that button to these as well even though there's already a button in the bottom so add that button to the bottom of the handle and there we go the main thing I have to add is the thumb grip to go from this to that This last one I'm going to try to do one a little bit longer so that you could fit two or three fingers in there. So maybe we'll go for like a five inch handle here and then we'll stretch it a bit.
Well, there we go. There we got one that you can fit probably two or three fingers in. And I'll put a thumb grip on that one as well, of course. And like I said, the big key is try not to mess up any of your swirls while you're attaching a handle. And if you get a little bump in there, don't worry about it. But it just uh, it's nice if you can get that attached without messing any of that up, without disturbing too much of the swirl of it all. And uh, just play around with different size, shape, handles. If you don't like that handle and you want to make the same style mug, put a different style handle on it and uh, just have fun with it. But uh, thank you guys for being here. As always, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps you. And uh, I said in my last video, if you try this, uh, I'd love to see your attempts at it. Send me a picture on Instagram. I already had uh, somebody do that. It was really great to see. And uh, like I said, I hope it helps. And I uh, hope you guys have a great day. And we'll see you soon. All right. Bye.